Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Spiritual Growth Journeys. I'm Kimberly Palm. Welcome to my channel. So I'm trying to fix my camera here. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I wanted both my beloved Miriam and Yeshua behind me here. Oop, I am bouncing. Why am I bouncing? I don't know why I'm bouncing. It's bouncing. It's the camera. Sorry about that. Uh, the camera is bouncing. <laughs> don't know what's going on. Um, so today we're going to talk about kind of a touchy subject. I, that is just awful. It looks like I'm bouncing and I'm not. I'm sitting here and I'm not moving. <laughs> it looks like I'm bouncing. Um, we're going to talk about a touchy subject. And that subject is do angels, do angels have names. Now, when I do readings for my clients, a lot of them want to know the names of their guides and angels. Cause one of the things I tell you is how many guides and angels you have. Sometimes I'm able to tell you who the guides are. Like if it's your grandma Marie, or it's your sister, whoever, or your brother, Bob, or you know, your uncle, son, or your great, great grandpa, you know, um, whoever, you know, I can sometimes tell you the names of your guides. And sometimes I can't, and I'm not really supposed to give you the answers to everything. So one thing you need to understand about me is I'm a metaphysician and a teacher. So what does that mean? That means I am going to diagnose what is wrong with you spiritually, what is wrong with you mentally, emotionally, and physically. And then I'm going to teach you the tools you need to take responsibility and accountability to fix your own shit. I'm not here to wave a magic wand and make all your shit go away. I'm not going to do that. I'm here to give you and teach you what you need to live a happy, healthy, joyful life and to grow as a spirit being and to ascend to the fifth density. I'm going to give you the tools and teach them to you. I'm not going to do the work for you. I had to do the work for myself. I've been working on myself since I was a teenager. I'm 58 now. So I've been working on myself for like 40 45 years ago, I started working on myself. So I've been working on myself a long time. I'm not going to throw that all the all out the window to allow you to just, you know, entitle you to just wave a magic wand and make your issues go away. It doesn't work that way. So I will tell you how many guides and angels you are. Sometimes I will tell you who your guides are, especially if it's somebody I know, or it's one of my guides, it's the same guide I have, or it's just someone I'm familiar with. But usually I'm going to teach you the tools to grow your psychic uh, muscles so that you can connect with them yourself and find out who they are. Here's the problem. A lot of them don't have names. So let's talk about this. So God, um, angels do not typically have a name like we have on earth. Um, so I want you to think about this. When animals recognize each other in nature, whether it's birds or bears or dogs, they go up and they sniff each other's behinds for a reason. And that is because every single animal has a unique smell. And how their fellow animals or dogs, for example, recognize them is first they'll look at them and they'll go, okay, that looks like my brother, you know, Fluffy. And then they'll go sniff Fluffy and they'll say, okay, that smells like Fluffy. It's got to be Fluffy. That's how they know each other. Well, when you are out in space and time, out in the multiverse, space, time, dimensions, different dimensions, not all the beings have names. On planet Earth, we have names, we have language here, but there are planets where all the beings are known by their smell. There are planets where all the beings are known by vibration. 
There are planets where all the beings are known by a color. There are planets where people are, or beings are known by a number system. There are planets where, where beings are known by names, just like we are. And there are places where they're known by a sound frequency, sound frequency, vibration, and color, really popular, smell, really popular. Earth, we happen to have language and we have names. So the angels, and I've been telling this to people for a long time, angels actually don't really have names. All of you keep pushing me to give you the names of your angels. And one of the reasons it's not possible to give you the name of your angel is they don't have names. They're actually known by a sound and a frequency. And their name in the frequency or sound that they're known by has a meaning to it, which can be translated into English, but that's not like the name. So I'm going to give you an example. So in my case, let me go to my notes so I can say this in a way that doesn't sound bizarre my higher self. So you'd be known by, let's say the job that you do when you're not, when I'm not guarding the earth and doing this work I'm here on doing on earth to help humanity. I've been at this earth here for several thousands of years, helping um, humanity. I was here during Atlantean times and Lemurian times. So I've been here for, for several thousand years before I came to this earth to help the beings on this planet. I had a different job and my name, my real name, when I'm in my angelic being my higher self, because I'm just a fractal of that higher self, when I'm connected back up with my higher self again, when this physical body is gone and I leave and I'm hooked back up with my oversoul, my oversoul has a, has a job and that job is actually to... Um, go out to the stars, go out. I mean, this is actually, I shouldn't say it's not my main job. It's one of my jobs. I, I do all kinds of stuff. I create universes. I do all kinds of stuff. But one of my main jobs before I came here is going out to the stars and preparing, preparing them for solar systems to be reset to their original state. Okay. So my name might might be and this is an example of how angels would be known the interpretation of my name could be she who goes out to the stars and prepares them for solar systems to be reset to their original state that literally could be the meaning of whatever frequency i vibrate at that could be my name or it could be she who lights up the night sky or she who puts the twinkle in all the stars or she who creates the metals in the solar system, the gold and the silver and the metals, or she who is the keeper of the waters or she who is protector of the realm of Agarnon or some who knows what I'm making something up. That is what my name. Is. So my name is going to be, a angelic representation an angelic sound it's going to be a sound and a frequency specific to me and the interpretation of that into words of what the the name is is it's going to be a description of like who what i was created for by source because source created all the elohim first and then the archangels and the angels and we were all, all of us were all created to um have specific stations and jobs and things that we do and we are associated with those jobs like protector of the universe or you know um you know whatever military commander of the planet parthenon or <laughs> xenon or you know whatever so your angels if you ask them what their names are they may, if you push them, 
they will give you a name. They'll say, my name is Andy, or my name is Joe, or my name is Sarah, or something like that. And that is just to make you feel comfortable. They're playing to your ego. So this need that us humans have, sorry that I'm bouncing by the way, cause I'm not controlling that. My camera is flipping out. It's the camera. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, but anyways, the human ego has a need to label everything. We label everything in society, good, bad, black, white, red, blue, green, this, that, male, female, we're, we're all about labels. And that is an ego thing. Okay. That is your human ego. You have the severe name for connect in order to connect with something. I must name it. You know, it's this ego saying, I cannot connect with this computer unless I name it Bob. I must name my computer Bob. And if I don't, my ego is going to flip out and get angry. You know, I must name my guides and angels. They have to have a name. I'm going to ask you this. Why? Why? Why do your guides and angels, can they just be your guides and angels? Do they, do you really have to know their names? Can you just call them in and say, like I do, I call in my guardian angels and guides. I have questions for you. And then I have a conversation with them and I ask them questions. I don't sit there and go, I call in Bob and Sarah and Joe and uh, Gussie and Frank and Fred and Josie. And I don't do that. That would take an hour. I have, <laughs> I have six head angels and then I have a hundred more others that follow me around everywhere. And then on top of it, I have <laughs> my, my 12 spirit guides. If I were to sit there and call each of them all out by name and call them all in, that could take an hour. <laughs> I just call them in as a group. And I don't identify them specifically by their name. Now, some of them will step forward and I know who they are. I just know them and they will give me a specific message from them. And that's fine. Like Yeshua, for example, you know, I know who he is. I know his name is Sananda. His soul name is Sananda. Not everybody has a soul name. Okay. Some of you, when you're in spirit form, you don't have a soul name. So I have a soul name that I've taken on just for my, my higher self soul has a name, which I'm not going to say for specific reasons. I'm not allowed to, um, actually been banned from giving out my name for reasons I cannot share. And they ha it has to do with, um, evil, dark magicians that would love to use that to their purpose. I'm not going to, to share that, not just evil magicians, but demonic entities. We don't want the demons to know my name. So I don't give that out. Um, I only give it out to specific people who I can trust. If I can trust somebody, I will tell them my name. My oversoul has a name, but even that name was just given to me for the purpose of working with earth and other planets where people have a name. So when the angelics are working with a planet where beings are known for having a name, we will take on a pseudonym, you know, a temporary name, whatever you want to call it. Well, it's not really temporary. It's kind of a name that we chose to use to give to beings on those planets to identify us. Okay. So when I'm being a guardian angel to certain humans, which is what I do when I'm not in my physical, in this body, I'm a guardian angel um, here on earth. When I'm doing that, I might tell my client who is the person I'm protecting a human name that they can understand with, or they will give me their own. They will just give me a name. They will give me a name. I'm going to give you an example of this. One of the humans that I was protecting back in the early, the late 1800s, let's just say early 1900s, turn of the century, was a guy named Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain. He was my client back 120 years ago. Okay. So he actually gave me his own name. He came up with the name for me and he called me Clarabelle. He still calls me Clarabelle because he'll pop in when I'm having conversations with psychic medium friends and he'll pop in and want to chat and he calls me Clarabelle. So he came up with the name for me. All right. When I was his angel, there are 
there are people all over the earth who come up with all sorts of names for their guardian angels. Maybe they can't want to call him Bob. Okay. Angels do have a name. They will tell you just to keep the human ego satisfied because the human ego is determined to have a name no matter what, because you guys can't be happy with the fact that the angels don't have, they have a name, but their name is a big long. It's the identity that goes with the sound and the frequency that they're identified with. So now I'm going to tell you what Michael told me today, earlier today. I had a chit chat with Archangel Michael because everybody calls him Michael and they have these names in the Bible that are assigned to these angels. Let me tell you the reason. It's because Raphael and Michael and Ariel and Uriel and all these guys, when they would appear to people Oh, quite often, actually, thousands of years ago, when things were happening on this earth, the angels would come in quite frequently. They had to give them a name. So they would give them the name Raphael or Michael, but that's not really their name. Raphael's name is probably he who is in charge of teaching and mentoring and uh, protecting all the healers of the universe and sending healing to all the humans and the other beings. Okay, that's probably what his name really is. And, but it's really a sound frequency. And then that is the meaning of that frequency. Okay. So I asked Michael, I said, we know your name isn't really Michael that was given to you by the stupid humans on planet Earth, or you or you gave it to, to the stupid humans to keep us happy with our little egos. What is your real name? I got really emotional. In fact, I called my sister, Michaela, who channels Eshwan. She's not my blood sister, of course. She's my soul sister. Um, I don't have any blood sisters. I was born into this life with just one sibling, and that was my baby brother, who the cabal decided to murder two years ago. So um, um, anyways, um, my um, sister Michaela and I were chatting and I just lost my shit. I was crying really hard. I will try not to cry again. Um, luckily, I have no makeup on except for some lipstick. My face looks red because I was out in the sun. I was sitting out in the sun. Um, I just have some lipstick on. But anyways, uh, let me tell you what he, what Michael said to me. First of all, he told me that he's going to be coming here. I asked him if he had any messages and his message for all of us was that he is coming here, physically coming here soon to, for judgment. Now keep in mind all of these people who say that, oh, there is no judgment. They're just good and bad. And we judge ourselves and blah, 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 blah. Okay. That's a bunch of Luciferian new age crap because there actually is judgment who is their judgment for? Not me. I'm not getting judged. People who follow the rules of the universe, follow the laws of the universe, who are good people, loving people, live in their heart space, are kind, compassionate, mostly service to others. We don't get judged. Our soul does our own judging with our own life review. That is 100% true. 100% true that we don't get judged. When, when you're a good person following the laws of the universe, there's no judgment. Who is the judgment for? The judgment is for all the wicked ones, all the ones who are torturing, raping, and eating children, all the ones who are poisoning the food and water and air, all the ones that are killing all the animals, all the ones chopping down all the forests, all the ones um, destroying the earth, all the ones trying to depopulate us, all the ones running the governments, all the ones... Um, um, that are corrupted, like the three letter organizations and all the minions, all the demons, all the shadow people, all the demonic type entities, that is the judgment is coming for them. All of the, the beings on this earth, the, the things and the beings and the creatures, and the, the vril, the reptilian, the um, everything judgment is coming for them so michael says i am coming soon to judge the earth there are what you call angel tribunals and i know all about this because my higher self sits on an angel tribunal so a tribunal it's like a court a heavenly court of angels 
they're going to put people like fakey his name's really spelled f-a-u-c-i that guy he's going on trial g-a-t-e-s of hell the gates of hell that guy yeah he's going on trial uh queen of england her soul already went on trial because uh, she was killed whatever um these creatures these terrible horrible creatures that have been plaguing humanity for a long time all going on an angelic court tribunal trial where they will get judgment a lot of them depending on how evil they are and if they've been reincarnating and doing the same bullshit over and over where they keep harming humanity over and over and then they reincarnate and do it again and again like hitler and mussolini and some of these guys they reincarnate stalin you know those kind of people they come back in they do it again they come back in and they have their memories of who they are and they know they're here to destroy us those people actually do not get pun punishment like you would think or they're sent to hell and da, 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 da. they don't get that no they get something much worse there's actually things that are worse than hell they get <laughs> They get obliterated and recycled back to source and absorbed back into our mother, father, God again. That's that's where they go. Okay. The same with Satan. He was already obliterated. He's gone. So all of the idiots who say hail Satan, yeah, they're they're hailing nothing. There's nothing there. Satan was obliterated and recycled back to source. What's still left here on the earth are Satan's minions. The minions are all still here and they're all going to get judged. A lot of them are going to be recycled back to source. Now, who gets the hell punishment, as they call it? It's not really hell. There is not a location known as hell. Hell is unique to each person based on the crimes they've committed or the laws they've broken um, against humanity or against uh, the law, the universal laws they've broken. Okay. Um, so each person gets their own hell. The only people who get hell punishment are people who do terrible things so if you swore at your mom you're not going to get hell if uh even if you were a prostitute you're not going to get hell because you might have been put into that prostitute role for many different reasons um you might have been forced into it you might have gone into it because your mom and dad beat you and were druggies or you were an orphan i mean you were desperate there's a lot of reasons you're not judged as bad and evil and and put into hell for doing that um what you would get is rehabilitated if you do that kind of stuff if you do those things you're going to get rehabilitated okay the hell is very specific to people who rape murder kill pillage destroy backstab people repeatedly um cheat on you know if you're a dude and you're married and you're cheating on your wife over and over again yeah, there's a special hell punishment for that. There really is. And it might be that you come back as a woman whose husband cheats on you repeatedly and breaks your heart. And then you know what it's like. You get to feel that. That might be your hell. Or your hell might be that you have to go counsel people who went through that. You're going to have to pay it back sometime. And that is because whatever you put into the universe now is going to always come back to you. All right. Um, there's not a place called hell. Okay. There's hell is different for everyone. Um, Satan and all the demonic entities come from the fourth dimension and fourth dimension is not hell. It's just the fourth dimension. It's just the dark dimension devoid of all the light of God, where all the demonic entities come from. If you go to that dimension, there's no light. Okay. There's no light. There's no God. It's just darkness they actually show you that dimension in that movie insidious i think it is or i don't know if it's insidious it's it's the one where where the guy keeps getting sucked into this other dimension that's like a dark version of earth it's like a, a clone of earth but everything is demonic and everything's dark it's just all dark there's no light that that's more like the fourth that's the fourth dimension it's the demon realm and um, they're showing it to you in the movies. They show you everything in the movies. And then they call it um, uh, they call it science fiction, but it's actually truth. Everything that they call science fiction is usually the truth. And everything that the medical industry and the government says is the truth is usually a lie. So you, it's usually the opposite of what they say. 
but then Hollywood will show you the truth and then tell you, oh, it's a fairy tale. Like the story of Sleeping Beauty. I don't know if you all noticed this. This is something else Michaela and I talked about earlier. But Sleeping Beauty, everybody in the entire kingdom is put to sleep. That's called stasis. That's called stasis. They're put into a stasis. Guess what's going to happen when we go through the shift of this planet? You and me and everyone on this earth is going to be put into a stasis. It's going to be like we're asleep for a while. And that's while we're asleep, everything will be healed. And every time I ask, because I asked again this morning, I asked Yeshua and St. Michael, the archangel, I asked them, what is going to happen when we go through this event? And they keep saying the same thing over and over and they won't change their story. They're sticking by it. And that is healing. Everything on the planet's going to be healed. The water will be healed. The skies will be healed. The land will be healed. The forest will be healed. The humans who stay here, who stay on earth will be healed. As Yeshua says, he is turning heaven or earth back into more of a heavenly place. Okay. Um, it's going to be, and that's this earth. Now there's going to be 70% of the people out of here who are going to go to a different earth. You can call it Nibiru. You can call it whatever you want. Planet X. It's a copy of earth where everybody who wants to play in the 3d, they want to stay 3d. They're going to go there. That's, we're going to, they're going to enjoy themselves. And that's not going to be all the people still asleep. It's going to be some of the people that are still asleep because there's a lot of high vibrational loving people that are brainwashed and still asleep they're not necessarily going to nibiru the ones going to nibiru are the narcissists the people who are not nice um egomaniacs you know narcissists um um haters judges the radical religious people the people who are indoctrinated heavily into religion who have no way out they're just never going to leave okay radical islam radical judaism radical christianity and other types of religions where that's all they know and they refuse to leave that they'll be leaving here they won't be able to stay here um there won't be religion on this earth after the shift it won't be here so the religion will be love, unconditional love and oneness and unity. The religion will be unity, consciousness, unconditional love, connection to source, creator, connection to everything, each other, all the animals, the trees, everything. If you watch the movie Avatar, where they're on Pandora, that beautiful planet, that's what Earth is kind of going to be like after the shift where we're going to be connected to the trees and all the animals and everything like they are all of the Pandorians they are all connected to everything. And that's how we're going to be. Oop, I got to get off of here in a minute, watching my time. So I have one last thing, important thing. And that is what is the name of Archangel Michael? His name is not Michael. He introduced himself as Michael to humanity because humans have an egomaniac need to have a name. Give me a name. I gotta have your name. Even like police officers got to know your name immediately. Whoever people always want to know your name. Michael's name is got to breathe here because this was really heavy. <laughs> okay, victory of the one who sits on the mercy seat victory of the one who sits on the mercy seat sorry i'm getting emotional again Whew. i just it's just so much okay let me say this one more time <laughs> i'm sorry I'm trying really hard not to really lose it here victory of the one who sits on the mercy seat i want you to put that into your head and understand what that really means what does that really mean who is the one who sits on the mercy seat who is that it's really in a way all of us because we all are god in a way we're all connected to god we're all one everything all the beings that live in the universe all the animals all the trees everything it is all god it is all one and then there's also the creator itself there's the creator and then there's all the bits of the creator that broke off and made all of this that we live in now that is 
That is the one who sits on the mercy seat. That is who sits on the mercy seat. It is mother, father, prime creator that made every everything. It's I am that I am. It's I am presence. So Michael's Michael is known by a sound frequency and vibration that has a meaning of his full name with the sound is the victory of the one who sits on the mercy seat. And <laughs> it makes sense to me because he leads um he leads the angel armies. He leads the angel armies. That's what he does. He leads the angel armies. And my favorite song that really gets me, I cry every time I listen to it, and it's really connected to Michael, is um, the God of Angel Armies. And the words, the main chorus is, I know who st stands before me. I know who stands behind. The God of Angel Armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of Angel Armies is always by my side. So Michael directs the angel armies, and then who directs Michael? The one who sits on the mercy seat. The one who sits on the mercy seat. It's the creator. <sighs> so I just want you to understand this, that when you come to me and you have a session, I'm not going to tell you your guardian angel names. I can't. They they may come to you and say, call me Susie or call me yellow or call me blue fairy or call me Gunga Bunga Bunga Binga, whatever you want to call them. You know, humans are really wrapped up in this whole name name thing. And realistically, do I really have to have a name? Think about it. Get your ego out of the way and say, do I really have to have a name? Do I really have to have a name? I've had people call me sweetie, uh, girly, um, sister. Hey, sister, come here, you know, whatever. I've had people call me all kinds of things other than my name. They, they, they shorten my name down to Kim, which I do not like. I don't like to be called Kim. I have a million reasons why I'm not going to go into it, but that name, I despise that name for me. For somebody else, I'll call somebody else Kim if that's what they want. I don't want to be called Kim. My name is Kimberly. But people call me all kinds of names. But in the end, do I really need to be called a name? You could call me Butterfly. You could call me Diamond. You could call me anything. If the intention behind it is, is good. My ego has an issue with the name Kim, my ego. That's my ego. My ego does not like that name because of negative things from my past that are affiliated with that name. And that's something that I probably need to work on. But honestly, as a human, we have to sit here and think, do I really need a name? And, and the answer is no. You could be known by the smell up your butt that the dogs <laughs> know each other. You could be known by the smell under your armpits, whatever. You could be known by your lipstick color. You could be known, you know, she who wears purple, pink lipstick, <laughs> red lipstick. She who has brown frizzy hair, you know, whatever. It's the intention behind it. When somebody addresses me, if they address me with love and respect and kindness, or are they re or are they addressing me in a negative condescending matter or misogynistic matter i don't care i i don't want them calling me if they say my name and they say my name in a hateful way you know they scream my name at me and i have people do this regularly where they say my name to me and when they're speaking to me they're speaking in a malevolent mean nasty egotistical way then I don't want them even saying my name or uttering it because they're turning it into something bad because they're saying it in a bad way. Your name is not what's important. What's important is the energy being directed from you to others and from others to you. That is what's most important. What energy are you directing when you are speaking to somebody and calling them by name? Is it loving? Is it kind? Is it benevolent? Is it compassionate? Or is it mean and nasty? Are you screaming at them? 
hey, Bob, you asshole, get over here, you know. How are you talking to them when you're using their name? Think about that. What is the energy behind it when you're using a name? Words are powerful, and so is sound and frequency and speech and vibration. It's all powerful. You are powerful. You are a powerful co-creator with God. How are you addressing people? Are you addressing them lovingly? Hi, mom. How are you doing? I love you. I miss you. Or mom, leave me alone. Hey, go away, mom. You know, how, how are you addressing people? How are you talking to them? When you are using their name or not using their name or calling them, hey, sweetie, when, when, when the grandma lady in the grocery store, when I help her because she can't reach the top shelf and I reach something for her, she says, thank you, sweetie. She didn't know my name. She didn't call me by my name. She called my name as sweetie. That was the name she used for me. The meaning behind it, the energy frequency and behind her calling me sweetie was kind, loving, compassionate, grateful. Gratitude is one of the highest frequencies next to love. What is your intention when you're speaking to people? I want you to, for homework, all of you, this is your homework assignment. I'm a teacher. I want you to go away and think about when I call people by their names, what's the energy and frequency behind it? How am I saying their name? Am I saying it in a loving way or am I saying it in a mean way? Am I saying it in a bitchy way? How am I saying their name? Because it's that frequency that is important. And that is why angels, you know, they, they get, they give us these names, but they want you to be grateful and respectful to them. And in the end, that's all they care about is they want you to be grateful and respectful towards them. So you need to do that. And that's all I have to say. I've got to go make dinner for my family. So, um, peace out. <laughs> Actually, probably shouldn't do that. I'm going to do the original peace sign. The original peace sign is something like this. That's the original peace sign. It's that. Um, it wasn't this. That's actually Vril. We don't want to do that. That represents the Vril, which are the reptilians. We want to do your fingers together for peace. Um, that's why you see the statues that were built Um in like the 700s or whatever, the statues that were done before the bad guys took over in the 1700s. Up until the 1700s, all the statues, the fingers are together like that because that was the original peace sign. It wasn't the, the fingers apart. The fingers apart that the hippies created, that was injected into the hippie thing in the 60s by the Vril uh, reptilians. So thought y'all might want to know that. Anyways, love you all. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.